Well, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. Now today, we're going to be talking about comic books. Yes, it's a completely self-indulgent comic book video. Today, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite comic books. Now, don't worry. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking once again about regular old books. But I love comic books. I always have, and I always will. So I thought I would indulge myself this one time and talk about comics. So my top 10 favorite comics. Now these are my favorite comics. They're not the best comics. You know, that's, that's, that's beyond me. I can only talk about my favorites. Uh, completely subjective list. So my top 10 favorite comics. I'm gonna start with number 10, which is kind of a cheat because it's not a single comic book. Uh, it's basically a whole company full of comics. It's EC Comics. Now, back in the 1950s, EC Comics were the best comics around, and they made some of the best comic books that have ever been created. They were fantastic comics. They did horror comics, science fiction comics, crime comics, and uh, all kinds of just great stuff. They were so great that they got themselves into trouble. You see, well, you know, you know how society likes to blame all their problems on fun things that we like? Like, remember when society blamed all our problems on rock and roll, and then later on they blamed all our problems on, I don't know, role-playing games, and then they blamed all our problems on violent movies, and then video games. Society loves to blame their problems on fun things that we enjoy. Now, in the 50s, the fun thing that they blamed for all of our problems were comic books. And EC Comics, being the best, became the target of that. And they were basically brought down. The company eventually went out of business. Um, and it was tragic. Now, I'm not going to recount that whole tragic story. Uh, that's not a difficult story to find if you're interested. But I am going to talk about EC Comics and what made them great. Uh, I've got some reprinted comics here, unfortunately. They're not originals, if only. But they are the uh, company that made Tales from the Crypt. I know you've heard of Tales from the Crypt. And they also made The Vault of Horror. And The Haunt of Fear. I mean, look at that cover. I mean, that must have scared the crap out of people back in the 50s. And they also did great science fiction. They did weird science. Yes, they are the ones who made weird science. And they also made weird fantasy. Now, uh, the Earth is suffering tough times in this comic book. And, of course, they combined those two comics later and became weird science fantasy. Look at that critter on the cover. Now, that EC Comics was very uh, famous for their crime stories, crime suspense stories, right here. They also did shock suspense stories. That guy's in a bit of trouble. And they also did the ever macho two-fisted tales. Just a great, great line of comics. Uh, they had some of the greatest artists to ever work in comic books. They had Wally Wood, they had Jack Davis, they had Graham Ingalls, they had a ton of great, great artists. Uh, if you're interested, Dark Horse Comics is reprinting them all. Uh, and this right here is a sampler. This is Choke Gasp, a selection of hand-picked EC comic stories. And this book has just a fantastic uh, selection of uh, horror, uh, crime, and uh, other kinds of comics. It's just great stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they did just a brilliant, brilliant run of comic books. The quality uh, in EC Comics was fantastic. I highly, highly, highly recommend you check them out if you haven't already. So that was number 10. Uh, number nine is kind of an oddball choice, I admit, but I love it. It is Adam Strange. Uh, Adam Strange is a great comic book. I love it. Uh, it was from the Silver Age. Now, when I read it, again, it was in a line of reprints. Uh, but I did fall in love with this comic book. Uh, Adam Strange uh, was published in a comic called Mystery 
in space originally. Uh, basically, Adam Strange is a combination of superheroes and uh, classic pulpy sci-fi. And I love both of those things. So, yeah, of course I loved Adam Strange. And Adam Strange was an interesting character. Uh, he went to the planet called Ron, and the way he got there is he would hitch a ride on a Zeta beam, and uh, they were beams that were beamed from the planet Ron to Earth and you, at different places at different times. You just had to know where it was going to hit. You jumped on the Zeta beam, and boom, you were on the planet Ron, where there were all kinds of fantastic adventures. And he fell in love with Alana on the planet Ron. And the interesting thing about that is that Alana and Strange uh, kind of formed an equal partnership. It wasn't one of those deals where the girlfriend was like, oh, save me, save me. No, uh, Alana was uh, fully involved in all the adventures. It really was kind of an equal partnership, which is something you didn't see much in those days. So fantastic comic, Adam Strange. And I was pretty happy to get this big omnibus volume. You know, I kind of have a thing for big books. You'll definitely, you'll definitely notice that in today's list. So that was my number, my number nine. Number eight, my number eight choice is The Flash. I love The Flash. Now The Flash is basically a superhero with the power to run fast. He's a fast guy, that's it. And which could be, you know, a pretty boring superpower, but man, they do a lot with it in this comic. And it really is a great, great comic book. Now The Flash, he started out as a Golden Age character. And there's the Golden Age version of the Flash right there with his little metal helmet with the metal wings on it, running real fast like the Flash does. Uh, and he was very successful. But during the 1950s, superheroes kind of fell out of favor. And for a while, the only superhero that was being, or the only superheroes that were being published were uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, and that's it. And it took the Flash to be being recreated uh, as a new character uh, to bring in the silver age of comic book superheroes. It took the Flash. The Flash was the guy that did it. He brought the silver age in. No Flash, no silver age superheroes, guys. Sorry. And he did it. And this first issue of the Flash that was presented in Showcase Presents was just fantastic. It's one of the best origin stories. Crash, crack. He was hit by lightning spattered with his chemicals and police scientist Barry Allen discovered he had super speed and the way he finds out you know he's sitting around the diner and they spill a bunch of stuff and they all, it all goes in slow motion because he's he's going so fast that's just a brilliant sequence uh, that brought in the silver age of superheroes and this is just a great character uh, back in the 50s just some of the most creative silver age stories you'll ever find um, I've got them all in omnibus, omnibus volumes in the other room. I couldn't pile too many big comics back here. Uh, but yeah, great, great stories. Uh, a great rogues gallery. He had great villains. Uh, actually, I feel that Spider-Man was probably influenced a bit by The Flash. Um, I kind of feel like The Flash influenced, influenced a lot. And one great thing about The Flash, you know, a lot of characters that are printed for a long time, you know, uh, their books really go up and down in quality, you know? They have high highs, but a lot of them have low lows if they're being printed for a long time. The Flash, other, uh, on the other hand, um, maintained a really decent level of quality through all the different uh, ages of uh, comic books, through all uh, the, his different incarnations. The Flash was pretty much always good. You can go in a time machine to any time that The Flash was published, pick up a Flash comic book, it's probably going to be a good comic book. And man, you can't say that for many comics. So, The Flash. Uh, number seven. This is another oddball choice, I know, but I love it. This is Werewolf by Night, which was the 1970s horror series from Marvel Comics. It follows Jack Russell, 18-year-old Jack Russell, who on his 18th birthday inherits the curse of the werewolf. And every, all these uh, comics are told uh, from his perspective. It's basically a first-person story told from the werewolf's point of view. 
and it is amazing. And it, most of these early issues are drawn by Mike Plug, uh, who is one of the greatest uh, horror um, illustrators who ever lived. Uh, he was just, I mean, look at that. That is fantastic. I mean, this is just fantastic work. Mike Plug, Werewolf by Night. I got the whole series here in this one gigantic omnibus volume. It's fantastic. Werewolf by Night. Number six. Moving on to number six. It's got to be Hellboy. I love Hellboy. What a great comic. Uh, Mike Mignola uh, did a great, great supernatural adventure series with the most unlikely of heroes in Hellboy. <laughs> uh, the guy who's going to bring in the apocalypse. And it's just what great, great art. I mean, he is one of the greatest artists uh, ever to draw a comic book and it's perfect perfect for this series just that moody art and this, this great comic it's fantastic and uh he's a character that had uh, a pretty good arc in that he had a beginning a middle and an end it pretty pretty much hellboy's story ended here in this book hellboy in hell um yeah he came back after that but really the hellboy story ended here and it's just a great comic book I loved it. Okay, that was number six. Let's go to number five. What could it be? It's Captain America. I love Captain America. I have a soft spot for this character. Uh, Captain America drawn by the great Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby, probably the greatest comic book uh, creator who ever lived. And uh, this is the first omnibus uh, uh, volume. Man, look at that. Just such fantastic work in this omnibus volume. Uh, the first time that I came across Captain America, uh, he was hanging out with this guy, the Falcon. I got a bunch of old comics uh, from one of my friends. Old, his older brother was getting rid of his comics. And one of the comics he was getting rid of, oddly enough, was Captain America and the Falcon. And when I first read it, it was Captain America and the Falcon. Here they're foolishly trying to run up against Spider-Man. Not a good idea, guys. Spider-Man's pretty tough. Uh, but yeah. Captain America. I love him. If you've seen the movies, you know why I love him. Because those films are actually uh, a pretty good representation of who Captain America is. So, Captain America. Let's see. What are we on now? We're on number four. Okay. Number four. Swamp Thing. This is a great, great horror comic book published by DC Comics. I first came across Swamp Thing in that horrible 1980s movie, Swamp Thing. That movie was terrible, but the comic book was great. And uh, yeah, it was the original comic book was cr uh, created by Len Wein and Barry uh, Wrightson, uh, who is one of the greatest uh, uh, comic book artists of all time. Just a great uh, moody uh, artist uh, who did these great Swamp Thing comics, and they were fantastic. I mean, just look at that. Such great work. And after uh, Bernie Rison left the book, it was still good, remarkably. Uh, another comic that pretty much held up its, um, its quality. And eventually, um, it became a comic called uh, The Saga of the Swamp Thing. And uh, it was taken over by somebody you might have heard of if you're into comics, and that would be Alan Moore. And this is a big, gigantic, absolute volume of Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. Look at that. That's so cool. Yeah. And just some great artwork uh, in this book. It was a groundbreaking series, groundbreaking horror series, uh, Swamp Thing, when Alan Moore did it. Just a great, great book. Can't recommend it highly enough. So this was probably the high point for Swamp Thing. Great, great stuff. Uh, but Swamp Thing, another character that's held up his quality very well. Even when uh, DC Comics revamped all their comic books uh, back in 2011, 2012, they called it the New 52, and a lot of it was, well, a lot of it was good, but a lot of it was junk. Um, Swamp Thing was in that, and it was pretty darn good. 
like I said, this is a book that stays great. It really maintained its quality there too. So Swamp Thing, that's my number four. So who could be number three? Well, I haven't talked about him and you know I love him. And that would be Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. Marvel Comics, Conan the Barbarian. Now, this is a great comic book. Being reprinted now in these Marvel volumes, Marvel Omnibus volumes, reprinting all of these old, great Conan comic books from the 1970s and the 1980s. Yeah, look at that. Conan. I love them. Now, I'm going to include uh, in Conan, not just the Conan Bar the Barbarian comic book, but also the Savage Sword of Comic... Uh, the Savage Sword of Conan comic book. This was the uh, black and white comic that came out in the 70s. What is this, number 10? This is Savage Sword of Conan, number 10 from back in the day. Um, yeah, Conan was great. It went to Dark Horse Comics for a while and it was pretty good, I have all those. Uh, kind of slipped in quality there towards the end. But Marvel got a hold of it again and now it is great once more. Conan, love it. So. That was number three. Let me unbury number two over here. Now this is a certified comic book masterpiece. This is the Fantastic Four. Yes, Marvel Comics Fantastic Four and the Fantastic Four brought in the Marvel Age of Comics, uh, the great first family of comic books. Where you got Mr. Fantastic, the Invisible Woman, Johnny Storm, The Human Torch, and The Ever-Loving Blue-Eyed Thing. Just a fantastic book, illustrated by Jack Kirby, written by Stan Lee. Just some of the best comics that you'll ever find in your life. It's amazing stuff. I can't recommend them highly enough. I've got the first two omnibus volumes, uh, which are still available if you're interested in them. Uh, but they're also reprinted in some other ways. Of course, you can get them all digitally. But man... Fantastic Four. Loved it. Especially that old run. Jack Kirby, Stan Lee. Oh, it was the best. So, that leads me to my number one comic. Now, you have to be wondering, who could it possibly be? Who could it be? You know who it is. It could only be one guy. It's Superman! Superman, Mike. Really? Superman? Yes! Superman! Strange visitor from another world who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. Superman! I love Superman. Superman is the best. He's just fantastic. I love Superman. Why, you ask? Why is Superman? Listen, Superman is the best. He's the greatest superhero that ever was, the greatest superhero who will ever be. Why? For one simple reason. Superman is a nice guy with incredibly godlike superpowers. Uh, this guy doesn't have any agendas. He's not out for revenge. All Superman wants to do is help people. That's all he wants. He just wants to help people. He's a nice guy from Kansas who came to the big city to help folks. And that's what he does. That's all he does. Now, I became interested in Superman with the Adventures of Superman television show uh, that was rerun all the time when I was a kid. And then with the uh, Christopher Reeve, the great movie uh, that he was in. And then in comics, when John Byrne did The Man of Steel. Now, a lot of people kind of criticized this run of John Byrne's Superman. But you know, I really liked it. Uh, I thought it was pretty great and it got me really interested in Superman. And so I followed up, I, I looked into Superman and his golden age, age adventures. Uh, then I became really interested in what happened after that and read some of his Silver Age adventures. I just became just a huge, huge fan of all the eras of Superman. I love this character. He's fantastic, and that is my number one. Guys, thanks for indulging me here 
and letting me talk about comic books to you. Tomorrow, it'll be back to normal when I talk about regular old books, and we'll have a fine time here at Stately Vaughn Manor. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.